Amongst the largest feats that make the Philippines one of the fastest growing countries globally is that it joins the League of Newly Industrialized Countries, which is commonly recognized by international organizations. This term, however, is often misunderstood. Due to its title, people think that the Philippines has already industrialized. The country has developed its necessary manufacturing prowess. It is commonly known that to become an industrialized country, one would go from from an agriculture-based economy where people work on farms to eventually working in factories. After jumping to a manufacturing-based economy, a country would then head to the next stage of the finances and service sector. This is the case as what most people think has happened in the Philippines. The country is now at the stage of a booming service sector. But this is what people have misunderstood about the Philippines. It is a fact that the country did not become a fully industrialized economy. It still faces tremendous challenges in terms of infrastructure, governance, and education that need to be addressed to achieve sustainable economic development. Moreover, the country is still heavily reliant on other factors such as agriculture, services, and even remittances from overseas Filipino workers, which are unfortunately still missing out on the high-value contribution of the entire industry sector. The best way to even understand how the country's industrialization phase is lagging is by looking at the data. The World Bank shows the value added by manufacturing by the percentage of GDP. To this data, the Philippines as of 2021, has a value added to GDP of about 18%, which is below most of its neighboring bloc. Vietnam, for instance, has a value added percentage of 25%, whereas Thailand with 27%, Malaysia at 22%, and only Indonesia, which inches beside the Philippines with 19%. Furthermore, if we take a look at the entire industry sector, we may also see that the industry data as a percentage of GDP still shows that the Philippines is lagging behind its neighboring bloc. Vietnam has a 37.5 industry value added to GDP, whereas the Philippines with only 28.9%. This misconception of the Philippines is classified as a newly industrialized economy, therefore is misunderstood. In the same way, the value added to manufacturing, even if we don't classify it as a percentage of GDP, can also show how much the Philippines is lagging. Value added in manufacturing in the Philippines is $69.5 billion as of 2021. Vietnam, for instance, has over $90 billion, and Malaysia at $87.5 $0.5 billion. There is a reason why the Philippines has become a lagging country when it comes to manufacturing and having a robust industrialized sector. A quick historical overview can show us why. Throughout history, there have been various cases of why the Philippines failed to adopt a strong manufacturing sector. We can trace the story back to the 1950s. The Philippine government, through a policy called the Philippine First, wanted to protect its little local companies. It placed high tariffs and non-tariff barriers to entry. This resulted in international products being way more expensive than usual, as a tariff is often a tax on imported goods. Some economists, however, would probably say that this was the perfect move. Grow out the little local companies and then open up international competition. Indeed, however, the neoliberal economists would probably laugh at this, as the Philippines, after decades of trying to grow its local companies, have failed to compete internationally. Or even, the Philippines has never had a company that would compete domestically. The country can't manufacture automobiles, whereas neighbors such as Thailand and Malaysia had gone ahead to become miracle successors in these industries. The only few industries that the Philippines succeeded in were both steel and electronics. These, however, also had their issues. Steelmaking had once made the country a leader in Asia. The Ilion Steel Mill was once regarded as one of the largest on the entire continent. However, due to a failure in privatization and foreign investments, the steel company failed, rendering the only monument the Philippines had at manufacturing to zero. Electronic manufacturing, on the other hand, is the only one that has helped push growth to the entire manufacturing sector. However, it is filled with low-value added work. The Philippines does not manufacture the entire component, but rather are the ones who test and package these finished products. 
Furthermore, another historical point is if we trace back to the late 1970s, the government had also once announced an industrialization plan by introducing 11 big projects, from copper to aluminum smelters. However, due to a wide range of issues led by internal and external shocks, many of their plans had been dismissed. These issues through various sectors and historical points have led the Philippines to have a lagging industrial sector. Some research articles and economists themselves argue that it was solely because of oligarchism, protectionism, and a lack of export-oriented subsidies. They say that oligarchs have become too rich to the point that they don't prioritize national development but instead prioritize fattening their own pockets. A lack of government support has also failed the industry sector as entrepreneurs or even state-owned enterprises have not been encouraged enough to create a product for manufacturing purposes. These answers, however, may still be a narrow answer to understanding why the Philippines' industrialization failed. And there is a good argument for why it is also not an issue. The Philippines' economy, to most people's surprise in its developing stage, had leaped the industrialization phase. It went from an agriculture-based economy to a service-based economy. This is contrary to what most developing countries face, which first goes from agriculture to manufacturing, then services. Arguments laid out, however, have pointed out that this was necessary. The Philippines needed an alternative option to boost its economy. It also exported its labor globally, which helped generate a source of overseas Filipino remittances. Business process outsourcing has steadily grown and even made the Philippines the world's biggest. These all have then collectively made the Philippines an intensive service-based economy. The same data from the World Bank, which showcases the service value added by a percentage of GDP, shows that the Philippines is the highest with 61% as of 2021, only to be followed by Thailand at 56.7%, whereas Vietnam at 41.2%. This unique factor that makes the Philippines one of the only few to do so would then make some people think that this is fine. The Philippines is unique, as they say, just like how unique other countries are. Not everyone should be in the same economic standards. But while it is good to see that the Philippines found its unique economic model to address its lacking manufacturing sector, it must, however, not over-rely on its service sector. For the most part, there is no guarantee that business process outsourcing will continue to bring tremendous benefits to the Philippines. The BPO industry is driven by an ever-growing intensive competition. India, for instance, is a very big contender. It can be argued that India would one day surpass the Philippines and take much of the foreign investments placed there simply because India poses lower wages than the Philippines and has an already strong relationship with many multinational companies. Artificial intelligence is also poised to take some jobs away from the call center industry. Many economists and analysts have suggested that these are the challenges posed to the BPO industry of the Philippines, which is why manufacturing should not be dismissed. Further, it is also known that the value added per worker in manufacturing is often higher than it is in services. The value added per worker of industry in the Philippines as of 2019 is over $14,511, whereas in services is just $9,312, which is about 50% more. Lastly, a manufacturing-oriented economy is also important, as it can help alleviate the pressures of the country's merchandise trade deficit. In 2022, the Philippines will have incurred a merchandise trade deficit of more than $50 billion, which is partly due to its weak exportation of goods. What we can say so far is that, while the Philippines has leapfrogged from agriculture-based to service, there are still luckily several government initiatives that are being addressed to help fix the gap. There have been numerous foreign investment-led projects that are aimed to address this opportunity. For instance, several Chinese-led projects have been implemented in the past few years. There are also several other local-based companies, such as Steel Asia Manufacturing Corporation, which are continuously constructing steel-based factories around the Philippines and have partnered up with a Chinese company to potentially build another steel factory. However, as far as we know, many of these projects are still unrealized.
As long as the value added of manufacturing is still low, we may, unfortunately, still see that the industrialization of the Philippines is missing and that there is still much work that needs to be done to address it. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Why do you think the Philippines has a lagging industrial sector? Or do you think the Philippines should continue its booming services? Thanks for watching.